This tutorial is to show a simple basic example to create embroidery designs with DG. In the DG system we have a couple of icons here on top, on the left and on here on top we have menus. So to start a new page we click on this page symbol. This will launch an empty page. Now almost all embroidery designs are being digitized based on a scanned image. We are going to import one of those scanned images by clicking on this tool here and we choose a JPEG image as you can see here. Once this is done it's on our screen. We can zoom in, zoom out, well let's zoom in real big and you can see here those pixels. So this is a clear indication this is a rendered image. Now the image itself, I'm going to lighten up the image a little bit and we are going to use some of the tools you can see here on top. These are drawing tools. I'm going to create shapes, vectorize the shapes using the pen tool. And in order to do so, let's zoom in big and I will draw the shapes by creating a bunch of points. The points I'm creating right now are curved points because my shape is curved and I'm doing this by clicking and pressing the control key at the same time. This will create curved anchor points. I will work my way through until arriving to this spot here. Here I'm going to cut short and I'm going to continue the uh, inside part of the shape. I'm doing this because I already have my embroidery, my mindset to embroidery mode. So this is going to be a part which will be converted to satin stitches. That's why I keep this. And as you can see here, I will hide my image. We have now drawn this shape here and it's an artwork segment as you can see here in the sequence view window. We will proceed with uh, creating the next part, which is starting here in this corner part, and again here, we will continue drawing using my curved anchor points. Let's move the screen a little bit up here, and we will work our way through all this area here. For example, let's let's assume we made a mistake here. You see, I I went off three points, so I can always go back by pressing the backspace key. Continue drawing here. So here we have more like a, a straight shape, and we are arriving to the first point, and here we press O and then enter. As you can see now, this part is done as well. We'll focus on the letter E. Let's start here. So the letter E shape is all straight. These are going to be all line points. And here as well, I'm going to simplify the shape by just cutting short here. Press O. Again, you see here, and the uh, middle bar section, I will do that as an individual segment. Press O. We are now drawing the uh, P. Now here we have curve, curved shape. That's why I'm pressing the control key, arriving here and then straight. And then I'm going to work my way to draw these parts. Coming here and pressing O. And then we arrive with the letter S. We have this, uh, let's start here. And again, here we have like a curvy shape. So 
press the control key again and here we have a spiky part straight 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 and then curve again this drawing method here we call that quick draw we have a couple other drawing methods available as well for example Bezier which is a more professional way but uh, we'll keep it simple at the beginning and uh, we will use the quick draw method coming to the eye which is a simple straight uh, points here everywhere press O then we have this Middle, middle bar, this column. All right, now we're coming to the... Uh, let's do this more complex shape now here. We, I'm going to do this in different parts because the same as with the letter P. I'm going to do this part here in satin, this part in satin, and here I will follow through. Imagine my, my way of thinking is always, let's assume you have a pen in your hand and you are... Uh, really painting this with a brush. So you would start here and you will go here and then go back. So basically you see this part will be cut because this will be the predominant part here. And if we follow through here, we go and make a turn here. And then this swoosh part is going to be on top of the broader part. So that's why I'm going to cut it through here. So that is why I, when I draw, I will create my shape in such a way that I'll arrive here and here I I will cut it through and then continue drawing my shape. Press O and as you can see this is now an individual part. So let's zoom in a little bit bigger here so we have more precision when we work. We will draw starting from that corner point there and in this case this shape is going to be uh, on top of this part that's why I continue drawing and I'll basically create the shape uh, in such a way in such a sequence here we will cut short as I had explained before arriving here and with O okay I hide the backdrop image and you can see here this is one individual part now we will draw this part here so let's let's start for example at this corner point and we will follow through here then with curve points we will draw the inner shape and here this shape is on top of everything else move the screen a little bit up here coming to this turning point and we will draw all the way through here we will join the last point with the first one and now we're coming to the last portion with, uh, with the O here so let's start with the outside perhaps here
we will now convert the uh, artwork shapes you can see them here in the sequence view window all of them into satin stitches let's start with the first one here which is this part of the P zoom in a little bit so I'm selecting the artwork segment and then I'm going to use this tool here called the angle lines tool with the angle lines tool I'm going to place an angle line at the beginning and at the end of this segment and in between I'm going to distribute more angle lines so the uh, the aim of these angle lines are indicating or giving the stitch direction the angle line of the stitches pressing G you can see here what happens so this segment now it's converted to satin and it has a beginning and an end point this is the first one now let's select this one here I'm going to do the same thing pressing the angle line tool and we're going to press uh, to place the angle lines at the beginning first one pair and at the end of this uh, of this segment and in between let's focus you on this corner you see here I want the stitches to to turn sharply here and here I also want them to turn like this and then all the way like this and with G pressing G you can see here this is sort of a little bit too twisted here maybe we add an angle line here and uh, yeah we can also uh, edit vector anchor points for example this anchor points are a little bit is a little bit too too extreme here so we'll slightly move it more inside in order to give a better result to the stitches we have the P and once we have done that we can select these two parts and we you see here on the ribbon we have a couple of functions one of them I'm going to use this called combine so what this does it it's going to combine those two segments and we have now a branch what we call the branch satin path now we have one entry point and one exit point shown by the green bead and the uh, red bead you can always move them anywhere you like to have them let's uh, move this one for example to this side press G to generate the stitches we're going to focus now on the letter E adding angle lines and we'll do the same with this at the beginning and the end of the segments and in between we distribute the ang stitch angles like so press G to generate continue with the next segment select it and place the angle lines press the select tool which is this one here shortcut S on the keyboard we can select those two and the shortcut for this tool here is combine is control L again here you see out of these two segments we have branched satin path here now we will proceed with the letter P add a pair of angle lines here and at the end of the segment so I'll zoom in real big in order to to really place them where the segment is let's place it like here and in between let's do some here we have this this uh, sharp corner here and along the way we distribute the other ones like so we come to the letter S the angle line tool here has a shortcut D the shortcuts are quite handy because they allow you to really work very fast distributing the angle lines on the letter S then we have the letter I and then this little so, uh, corner uh, not corner here column press D so let's place the angle lines 
this way and now we come to this part of the C from Cola press or place angle lines here and here and here in between maybe one more and we will so this is a tricky part here the best way how to deal with this is to start uh, with the angle line maybe we start here and then we'll make them turn in that way and here we'll do a sharp turn come in here and at the end of this segment you see here and now we will we will uh, work on this on this seg segment here which is this one so again here i need to be careful press d for the angle lines let's start at the very beginning of this part and maybe at the end which is here place angle line here and between those like uh, i said before we will distribute the stitch the angle lines so that the stitches will travel into into that uh, yeah stitch angle now we have this and for this uh, three segments i can also select segments uh, here right on the sequence view by just click selecting and with shift so i'm selecting all of them and with combine i have made them one combined satin pad now continue with the o press d G to generate so we have here you see here you have like a turning part so maybe here it's a good idea to start with the stitch angle a little bit like this so we give the stitches a chance to to generate in that area and here we make a sharp turn and at the end of the column here let's see yeah that looks, looks okay so maybe slightly like that okay now this a here we have three art segments let's start with this one place an angle line here place one here and perhaps one there then we have this segment add angle line pair here and uh, here again we have the same situation like in the L here you see so I'm starting a little bit uh, this way let's see how this looks good yeah and selecting this part and adding angle lines here as well so we have all those parts of the A we select all of those parts control L to combine them and we end up with the Pepsi Cola all in satin stitch you can see here now when I press D for 3D simulation you see here we have uh, thread connections between uh, the, the letters so there is one function on the embroidery machine that allows us to trim the thread between in order to, uh, instead of having a, a long thread connection here now the way how you activate that command is you select all the segments and you can see here on the ribbon we have a start and stop command so at the end of each one of the selected segments that's why I choose stop command I want to activate the trim now what this does is if I press 3D now you see all those thread connections are gone and you also see like this little scissor symbols indicating mm -hmm, we have trim commands so the machine will trim the thread in those areas and there are a couple of more functions that I want to show you one of them is uh, the lock stitch 
command and this is uh, very important because you don't want the threads to unravel when the garment for example is being washed and at the beginning at the end of each letter you want the thread to really stay in the fabric that's why we are going to select all of the segments and we are going to add the uh, the lock stitches okay so we see here in the ribbon we have start lock and end lock those are the commands i'll choose basic at the beginning and at the end i choose a lock stitch called line then we can go into more detail i want to launch the basic uh, the uh, basic lock stitch to start inside the uh, letter so let's you see here i went into segment settings lock stitch and here we have one setting called start lock inside apply okay what this does is at the beginning of uh, this this letter p for example can you can now see this little he has like a knot of stitches so these are the basic stitches it's the basic lock stitch at the beginning of the segment the beginning of the segment is where you see this uh, little bead here green color but the basic lock stitch is being launched inside of the letter so all the stitches are under this satin stitch and that's important because you don't want them to be visible when you when you have your embroidery and at the end of the segment in this case uh, let's see the end uh, of uh, this letter p for example you see here we have like a line of three four small stitches <coughs> best way for me to show this is if we go to si stitch select i select the stitch and now i will travel stitch up down this is a zigzag stitch and then we have small stitch one two three four so this is the lock stitch at the end of the segment and i choose line that's why it looks like that all right one more thing if we want our embroidery satin stitches to look a little bit more bold we can add uh, the density here we can change the density to a value that is more dense let's say 0 0.35 millimeters and you will see here the stitches are now now tighter and we will also add underlay you can see here we have a section called underlay let's add contour underlay you see here it's going to do a contour underlay inside the satin stitches so they are underneath and let's also choose a one called a zigzag underlay so what this does i will zoom in a little bit big here so it's basically creating a zigzag underlay underneath the satin stitches and the result is a nice bold looking embroidery all right this is a small or this was a small tutorial to show a easy to understand example based on a basic logo thank you